Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you guys all doing tonight? Doing another episode of uh, weekly weekend recap here. And got a good bit of stuff this weekend, as you can see here in front of us. Uh, also doing another case break here that I uh, just announced a couple hours ago. It's live on eBay right now. There's a couple adjustments and uh, typos in the uh, eBay listing. I put in there, you're getting six packs uh, per um, per lot there. It's actually 12. There's three 24 count uh, boxes in here. So each one will have 12 rack packs. Those are live right now on uh, eBay. So you can go to the community tab there in the subscription uh, setting and check those out if you like. But I'm gonna start off with some uh, mail I bought recently off eBay. I just got a couple days ago. So for you guys tuning in. Got this in the mail yesterday, and um, it's from Florida. Rip this open real quick. Make sure it's the right thing that I ordered. It's a couple days late getting here. You guys all have a good weekend. And this is not baseball cards. Something a lot different, actually. We have an invoice slip here and some protective padding here. Hey, Tedster, thank you everyone for joining us on WrestleMania evening. I know it's WrestleMania 35 going on right now. So I appreciate you guys all uh, coming over here to check out the live stream. And Taco Tuesday, how you doing, man? Says you're in a new apartment. I, I'm glad to hear that. The last time I talked to you, uh, I was kind of worried. Your situation didn't sound that great. So, it's always good when people uh, take the extra steps to wrap things up, but sometimes it's real annoying too because you can't get it open. Here we go. For those you can see that, this is actually from a place called Sideshow Pizza in Greensburg. I bought this token off eBay. Never really see these. This is like a family fun center that existed like in the 80s and 90s. Um, right in our hometown, a few minutes away from where we lived. Used to have uh, birthday parties there and stuff like that. It was, it was like a huge arcade. They had prizes. It's basically like a, it was a better version of Chuck E. Cheese for the most part. And, you know, they had ski ball, tons of stuff. They had like a big back room where you'd have birthday parties. They had mechanical animals that played instruments, sang songs. It was freaking awesome. But uh, haven't seen one of these in so long. This is 350 free shipping. So I'm going to get a... Nice little uh, case for the coin case for that, protected. So that was my first buy. I'm gonna go through these real quick. I'm sure you guys wanna see the cards and whatnot that I bought. Hey Edward, Edward says we had a Pistol Pete pizza. Yeah, that's kind of how Chucky, or uh, Sideshow Pizza was. It was like the same way. Eric and I used to go there all the time when we were younger. And my next purchase, I got this. It was actually a best offer. I think it was like 10 bucks we were offered from seven and they took it. Another magic slate for you guys that watch my recent videos uh, for Peter Pan and the Pirates. And you guys have seen me pick up some of those before in the past. Figures, I think I got this for like I don't know, ten dollars shipped. So my Magic Slate collection is coming along pretty well, and this has never been used before, as you can see there. Matches my real Ghostbusters and King Arthur Magic Slates. So pretty cool. I'll throw that in a magazine bag and put it on display somehow. And then yesterday I went to a baseball card show that I kind of found out about last minute. It was in Pittsburgh. Um, picked up some stuff there as well. Got a bunch of singles. There's a seller there that uh, had a few good boxes. There's like a six for a dollar box. He had some 50 cent boxes, so took some time, went through those, found some cards I didn't have. First one off the bat is the uh, very well-known, iconic Bo Jackson football baseball card from 1990 score. A lot of people love this card. A lot of people love Bo Jackson. Wasn't sure if I had this or not. I can't remember it being my PC, so I picked it up. If I do have it, I'll send it off for a fan mail response or something like that. There's a lot of Bo fans out there, I know. So That was 17 cents, six for a dollar, rounds out to 17 cents. The next one I found in there was Andres Galarraga. This is 86 top traded. This is also his rookie card. So 
I think it books at like a buck fifty. I also had this one too, but I figure seventeen cents can't go wrong with a, a rookie like that from eighty six. And then I pulled a Randy Johnson eighty nine tops rookie card out of there as well. These are all in nice condition too, for the most part. They have sharp corners and whatnot. So another seventeen cent steal there. And then Raul Ibanez rookie card. This is a ninety six Fleer Ultra card. Didn't have this one either. So another one out of this six for a dollar box. I don't have too many later rookie cards, especially from 96 Ultra. That's kind of around the time I, I got out of collecting cards. And it looks like we have a $4.99 Super Chat donation from Bane's World. Thank you so much, Edward. Edward also has a, a YouTube channel as well. He rips packs. He goes over baseball cards. Uh, a lot of cool videos. So if you like what I do on here, you definitely want to check him out. Click on his, uh, his um, donation there and give him a sub. Really cool guy. And the next one I picked up... Also out of the six for a dollar box, LeVon Hernandez, 96 Bowman. This is a foil card too, which is pretty nice. Didn't have this one. I don't really think I have any rookies from 96 Bowman set, so I was pretty happy to pick that one up as well for under 20 cents. And then uh, this is the very first card I pulled out of the box, the John Smoltz, 89 Don Russ rookie card. Uh, I pulled it out and the guy was like, yeah, it's not supposed to be in there. I was like, okay, well, let me put it put it where it belongs. He's like, that's whatever, I'll... I'll uh, I'll sell it to you. I was like, cool. And then I ended up finding a bunch of other rookies in there too. So I think he's kind of just saying that he, I don't even think he really knew what he had in the box to begin with. WVJ Jace's was a card show in Virginia. Only had two tables. Wow. This place was advertised 40 tables. I actually saw it on Craigslist. And then I got there and there's probably about 15 maybe or something like that. But there's some pretty good stuff for the most part. Thank you, Tim, for summoning to Bane. Definitely check them out. Uh, also six for a dollar. Jeff Kent, ninety-two pinnacle, another nice one. I always like Jeff Kent. Always, always is uh, all-around solid ball player. So I had that one already, but uh, a lot of these I pick up for fan mail responses as well. I try to find some I don't have for my PC, but did have that one. And then this is also a good deal. Jeff Kent, ninety-two leaf black gold card. I think it probably books around five bucks or something like that, but for seventeen cents, another nice one. And then there's a bunch of inserts from the 90s in here and whatnot as well. Um, I was trying to go through there as fast as possible. Uh, this is a nice Barry Bonds 95 Fleer Ultra Hitting Machines card as well for 17 cents. Can't go wrong with the Bonds insert card for that for that uh, cheap amount of money there. And then get to the top loaders here. These are mostly 50 cents. Derek Lee 94 per deck, and this is an Electric Diamond card, so even better. Quite a nice uh, steal on that one, 50 cents. Didn't have that one, so picked up for the PC. Didn't have this one either. Jim Edmonds, 93 tops, gold card. I had the regular version, but did not have the gold one, so 50 cents on that one. Definitely picked that one up for sure. And then a 78 tops, Clint Hurdle rookie card, 50 cents as well. Don't have too many 78 tops cards other than Jack Morris and uh, the Paul Molitor rookie card, so figured couldn't go wrong with that for the rookie card collection there. Another one that's been on my radar for a while that I just finally picked up. Juan LeBron. This is actually an uncorrected error card. This is uh, Carlos Beltran's picture. This is 95 tops traded. And um, actually, I'm sorry, 96 tops traded. Juan LeBron is pictured on the Carlos Beltran card and vice versa. So uh, picked that up for a buck. Pretty happy about that from my rookie card collection. Taco Tuesday says, John, I was worried about you, man. I finished watching the 20-box mixer that must have taken all day sorting for shipping. Uh, I took like several days. I, I, I would get home from work, and my entire kitchen was like full of just stacks of cards for teams, and I would just like sigh at the, at the sight of it. And it took days upon days, and uh, just putting them all in team bags was very, very tedious. But I, I managed to get through it and send them all out, and I think everyone was pretty happy with those. Also, Lee Smith, 82 Don Russ rookie card. Didn't have this one either from my personal collection. Very, very sharp as well. And uh, centering on there is pretty nice too, so 50 cents for that one. Nice pickup. Smoltz 88 Fleer update. I think I had this one already, but I picked it up just in case. Can't go wrong with the Smoltz rookie card for 50 cents, especially the, the update. The 89 Don Russ is the one I see the most of. And an R.A. Dickey. And this is 1997 Bowman uh, rookie card. Also 50 cents. One I didn't have either, so grab that from my PC. And a Billy Wagner, 94 per deck. I don't think I really ever even saw this card until uh, I came across the show yesterday. So definitely knew I didn't have it in, in my rookie collection. So had to grab that one for 50 cents. 
Bane's World said I wanted to see the stack of Sabo cards. Yeah, there's a pretty nice stack of those. Pretty nice stack. Uh, Bo Jackson, 87 Tops. Um, we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of these in the 87 Tops break um, coming up here soon. As soon as they sell out, we have... I'll get into that a little more later, but um, this is a sealed box. I'm not going to rip it open until we actually do the break. Just so um, there's no questions about, you know, pack switching or anything like that. So maybe we'll actually see one of these on top of a wax pack. It'll be pretty nice, but can't get wrong with uh, having too many Bo Jackson rookie cards laying around. As you'll see, there's the next one, 87 Don Russ. I think I have one of this card, but uh, always good to have a couple of those laying around. And I always liked this insert set when I was younger. John Smoltz, obviously a uh, very, very great pitcher. And uh, love this insert set. This is 1993 Select Aces. And I always loved um, just the the look of these cards and everything else. I pulled a Roger Clemens out of a pack when I was a little kid and was like, oh, these cards are freaking awesome for that time era, 93, you know, cards for the most part. You got through 91, which were all dull. 92 were mostly all dull and boring. And then you get to 93 and see something like this. It's like, wow, these are, this is awesome. So I picked it up for more like nostalgia. Have the, have the, I still have the Clemens too. It's in a box actually right next to me. And then the last one I picked up, I wasn't sure if I had this one. This is the Juan Gonzalez reverse negative error card. Um, it's switched around. I have many of the actual regular car, but uh, pretty cool. I think it books at two bucks, but add that to my rookie collection. I'm also collecting error cards now, too, so that's kind of a win-win a there. An error and a uh, um, a rookie card at the same time. So pretty awesome. So those were the pick up, pickups from yesterday's card show. And then on top of that, I did manage to find a... Box of 93 Top Series 1, which has the Jeter rookie card in it. And the guy only wanted 25 bucks. I offered him 20 and he took it. So that was a big score yesterday at this card show. I was really stoked about that. Um, these usually sell for about 75 bucks on eBay for a sealed box of these. So couldn't go wrong with that pickup. And this is actually going to be part of the next break we're doing. I'm going to be doing another mixer break, but it's only probably going to be 10 boxes. And it's going to be pretty sick. This is going to be in there. I got 93 Flair in there. There's 91 Bowman, which is chock full of rookies. I think there's like a 97 Collector's Choice. So a lot of different um, boxes in the next one. It won't be a ton of junk wax or whatnot. There'll be a couple boxes in there, but uh, a lot of good ones too. So I'm going to, I'll announce that here. I don't know, maybe next week or something like that. I want to do the 87 Tops Rack uh, break first. And then today, Eric and I went out. Uh, to a flea market and I found some more stuff found some more cards um, a couple more singles these were also 50 cents a piece and uh, first one I picked up is a Paul Canerco 95 Bowman not considered his rookie card but still um, I think it books are like four bucks it's definitely his first Bowman card um, I always like 95 Bowman too especially the foil um, the foil cards in that set too there are also those are really cool Scott Rowland rookies in there Hideo Nomo Incredible CJ Collectibles says, 20 bucks. I was pumped when I got two for 90. I pulled five Jeters, no gold. I actually pulled the Jeter gold out of a pack many years ago as a kid. I still have it. Pretty awesome card. And then, cannot go wrong with Pedro J. Martinez uh, rookie card here. 1991 Upper Deck Final Edition. Uh, some of you might remember a video I did recently where I picked up this a Gem Mint 10 at an estate sale for five bucks. Pretty insane. But 50 cents cannot pass on, on the Pedro J. And it's, it's a nice card, too. Nice centering and nice corners as well. So I'm going to walk away from that. And we have some Dave Justice fans out there, of course. I feel like every time I open a pack and pull a Justice, there's somebody talking about it. So I um, always like 90 Leaf as well. I think the set's awesome. It was always highly sought after when we were younger. Never really bought packs of them or anything. But I uh, always buy the rookies when I come across them for, for pretty cheap. 50 cents. I think it books at 3 bucks. But that'll probably be sent for a fan mail response to uh, any Dave Justice or Braves fans out there in the future. And then, I'm um, going back look at some of these comments here. Bill Nason says you would think that Juan Gonzalez with Eric Harvey worth more than two bucks. Yeah, you'd think. It's been at two bucks for a very long time. But I feel like Beckett really doesn't even go back and update any of their old prices at all. So I feel like Edgar Martinez got in the Hall of Fame. His, car, his rookies don't go up. Mike Mussina gets in the Hall of Fame. Rookies don't go up kind of crazy how that works and then i look back and see like some no name comments for the most part from like 1991 that are worth a dollar or two a piece it's like, how, how does it make any sense at all it doesn't really make any sense 
Taco Tuesday says, do you care if I send you some vintage hockey stuff? Something to remember the taco. Uh, I mean, you can. I don't really collect hockey stuff or really know anything about it. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're more than welcome to. And then this was, uh, there's a bunch of dirty uh, dirty totes that were all a quarter. Everything in them had a quarter, was a quarter apiece uh, this morning at this flea market. So this is pretty awesome. I always liked Top's Finest from the early 90s. This is 1994. This is the year after Tim Salmon uh, won Rookie of the Year, the AL Rookie of the Year. So this is a jumbo Top's Finest card. For a quarter, I was like, that's pretty sweet. I'm definitely going to buy that. Um, I think it books at like six bucks. So pretty awesome there. I always thought about doing a break on Top's Finest too. It's always a really cool set. Hey, Chad, welcome to the chat. Hey, Rusty, how you guys doing? Chris Weaver says, I pulled a Billy Ripken F-Face card out of the 89 Fleer box I got on Friday. That's pretty awesome. Usually, I always end up pulling the black box card. And the next thing I found in the same dirty totes at this flea market is these really cool 5x7 92 Stadium Club Master photos. I used to like really like these when I was a kid. I think I might have had one of them a long time ago. They also made smaller cards too, but these were given away and sent to uh, members of the of the the club um, exclusively, and then they were later on put in uh, to retail boxes. But for a quarter a piece, I think I actually got all these. There's ten of them here. There's 15 cards in this in this set or photos in this set. Um, I got them all for like two bucks. So Barry Bonds off the bat, pretty awesome. I think I was always just attracted to like how glossy these cards were. Like I said, 92, you didn't really have anything that stood out. You had 92 tops, very bland, 92 score, bland. Even upper deck was so bland. So when these came out, all the colors and everything else, um, it's like, wow, these are awesome. But I think they were more expensive back in the day too. So the first one was Bonds, Danny Turbo, second, Cecil Fielder, a Doc Gooden, rounding the bases there. Kind of weird seeing a card of him and uh, or a photo of him and he's not pitching. Will Clark, members only. So some decent ones in here for a quarter piece. Deion Sanders, a lot of uh, Neon Deion fans out there. Daryl Strawberry. Uh, Dom G says, you planning on going to Comic Con this weekend? Yeah, I, I go every single uh, every four months. I usually always go on the Friday morning. I try to get there at 10 o'clock. I don't do the VIP, but I'll get there right around 10 and uh, go around. I usually walk around for about two hours and. Usually the first lap, I always end up missing something. Second lap, I find it. So, hoping to find some good stuff there this weekend. So, if you go, I'll, I'll see you there Friday morning around 10 o'clock. Ricky Henderson's the next one. It's a nice one. And it's a nice shot of Lance Johnson there. Like that, during batting practice. And then Jose Canseco. So, for five by seven, these are pretty cool for, for two bucks for all ten of those. I mean, it's missing I mean, Nolan Ryan's in here, Ken Griffey, Frank Thomas, and then two other ones um, are missing from here. But maybe I'll, I'll even go after those and try to complete the set. Like I said, I used to like those a lot when I was a kid, so pretty awesome. Actually, we forgot one back here, somehow got left behind. And uh, probably honestly one of the best ones, Wade Boggs there. That's a pretty cool photo. Like that one a lot. Thank you, Trevor. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Taco Tuesday says I picked up a, a Godzilla old figure from the 90s. That's pretty awesome. And then one thing I left out actually from yesterday, very important card here. This 1972 Tops Roberto Clemente uh, card. This is a $7 price tag and I picked up for five. I think I did five. And uh, 1987 Tops actually did a, a card on this. It was called Turn Back the Clock. For Clemente, and I, I, when I was a kid, I had it. And I used to like really want this original card. I, I love the Turn Back to Clock card. And I was like, one day I'm gonna buy this uh, actual Clemente card. This is my first one in my personal collection. So for five bucks, it's really not uh, too bad a shape. I mean, the corners aren't the best, but for a '72 Topps card and for a Clemente for five dollars, um, definitely a good a good buy. I think so. Books at fifty. Obviously, it's not really worth that much in the condition it's in, but still an awesome card to have in my PC. So pretty stoked about that. And then also picked up a box of 86 Don Russ today. Um, if you guys remember the last mixer break, had a box of these in there, and we did not pull the Griffey. So Chris Weaver, who bought the Mariners, got uh, stiffed on the Griffey. So we're going to try to pull it again for the next mixer break. This will be included in a 10-box mixer break. And I'm pretty excited about only doing 10 boxes because it'll take me half the amount of time to get it done a lot quicker than uh before before it took like a week to just to sort all those and bag them up 
So we're also going to do this tonight. I figured might as well rip this open. I've had it sitting around for a while. But the any of you guys that are interested, I'll say it one more time for anybody that's new to the chat. We are still doing the 87 Tops rack case break. Um, I think there's two two spots were sold, so there's four left. So there's um, a total of six uh, six different stacks you can get in here overall. Um, 12 rack packs per stack. So selling them by, there, there's one on each side, there's 12 stacks on the left, 12 stacks on the right, and then there's three boxes in this whole case. But um, they're live on eBay now, so if you're interested, um, definitely check it out. We're going to do that break as soon as they sell out. And last time I looked before I started the last running, there was four left. So if you're interested in that, uh, Barry Bonds, rookies in there, Bo Jackson, Barry Larkin, Will Clark, Jane Moyer, um, and some others. It's pretty crazy, too, because the Barry Bond just sold on eBay for, like, over $2,000 because they're selling it as an air card. Danny Set Builder, um, a spot is $19.99 plus shipping, so for 12 rack packs. Uh, Bane's World says, got to go. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Always. Um, but, yeah, it's live now. Once, you know, if it sells out tonight, maybe we'll do the, uh, the live stream on the break tomorrow. Maybe a Tuesday, I'm not sure yet. But I'm going to do one of these uh, World Greatest Card Chase uh, multiple packs in here from the 80s and 90s for the most part, some from the 2000s. But key cards on this box is Doc Gooden, Rookie Card, 84 Fluter Update, Musina Rookie, and uh, Mark Grace, 88 Fluter Update. And we were always looking for a diamond pack and uh, looking for a Shoeless Joe, which I don't know if anyone's actually ever pulled the Shoeless Joe out of these boxes before, but uh, never know. First time for everything. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll get lucky tonight for one of those. Yeah, so, I mean, people are still selling the Barry Bonds 87 Tops on eBay as an error card. And it, it is an error card. It's a printing error, but every single Barry Bonds is like that. It's part of the numbers missing. But, uh, yes, yeah, so like I said, Eric and I just looked it up today on eBay. And one just sold for over two grand. On there is in a screw down case. It's like who is uh who bought that, you know? But they're still selling pretty sporadically on there for 60, 70 bucks. Some have sold in the past for over a grand. Young Bucks is a seven dollars a good price for a box 93 tops football series one. I would say so. Probably gonna have a a lot of the same packs as always in here. We might have possibly got an upper deck pack in here. 91 tops. It's not too bad. Saw a cello case of those today, or a cello box of those today, and almost bought it. So we got 90 Bowman. That's not too bad. You can pull Frank Thomas, rookie, or Sammy Sosa in there. And 88 tops. Um, actually, OPG. This is pretty cool. Don't really have too many OPG rookie cards, so I'd like to pull one out of there. Hey, Chris's cards. Welcome to the chat. Uh, Dante says, do you have any 2019 Don Russ cards? I do not. I really don't have any. 90 Tops. With Frank Thomas, rookie. Also Sosa. 91 Upper Deck. Possible Mussina, rookie. Or Jeff Bagwell. Um, 92 Score. I actually love this set. And a lot of people hate me for it. But I uh, <laughs> always like 92 Score. Definitely nostalgic about that. Uh, of course, 2012 Tops opening day. I feel like I get those in every single box. 93 Fleer, kind of a dud set there. 93 Triple Play, I used to like these um, a lot when I was younger. They were dirt cheap, 59 cents back in 93. And I remember pulling the Bill Clinton rookie card out of there, which still has some value to it, but the rest, uh, not so much. Kind of got duped there and having getting two packs in 93, Series 1 and Series 2. Oh, well, maybe we'll get an insert card. It'd be kind of cool. And I feel like these are always in there, too. 91 Stadium Club. Uh, this, is, yeah, this is Series 2. It's wrapped real weird. Uh, Jeff Bagwell's in his rookie cards in this series, so maybe we'll pull that one out of there. Um, 2010 tops. I feel like that's typical for these boxes. 91 tops. Chipper Jones rookie possible and an upper deck pack. That is pretty awesome, but too bad it's not the uh, series that uh, Derek Jeter's in. He's in series two, but still cool nonetheless. Cause I never see upper deck packs in these boxes, and also a Fleer Ultra. That's a nice one too. Series two. I think Jim Edmonds rookie cards in there. Um, usually always end up pulling, getting lucky and pulling inserts out of. Uh, Yield Ultra Packs lately, so it will pull a nice insert. And 90 Upper Deck with uh, Sammy Sosa rookie card in it. 
and Juan Gonzalez and a couple others. Uh, I guess we'll start out with Nadia Perdek. I got kind of tired of looking at these after the last break I did. Not always possible to pull Reggie Jackson autograph out of here. The odds of that are pretty slim. And it looks like we have a two-dollar super chat from Collector Holic that says, "Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Collector Holic. Please definitely go and check his YouTube channel out. Um, I have yet to do so myself, but I definitely will once the video is over. Really appreciate the super chat donations. Thank you so much." So, so far, nothing really that great. There's a Phillies uh, sticker there, holographic sticker. There's a Hall of Famer, Kirk Gibson. We know I'm going too fast. Oh, that's pretty nice, though. Larry Walker rookie card. Can't go wrong with that one. Not a bad pull out of there. And also Hall of Famer, Roberto Alomar. So, I have, like, a couple of that Larry Walker rookie already, but still, always nice to get that one. Can't go wrong with that. Um... I guess we'll do 91 tops next. And you guys know I like to eat the gum, so I'm gonna do that as well. I feel like I'm obligated obligated to eat the gum, or at least try it while I'm looking through the card. It's not that bad. I feel like it tastes the same way it did in 91. I remember seeing way too many of those cards. I hated them. The instant win game. Looking for a Trooper Jones rookie in this one. Used to love this set when I was younger. I don't really care for it too much now. Matt Williams All Star card. A lot of Matt Williams fans out there. And Bobby Thigpen All Star card. So nothing really worth noting in that pack. Not too much, at least. This gum's actually holding its flavor. It's not too bad. Um, I guess we'll do 88 uh, OPG next. Opening like a Galavin or Ken Caminetti OPG rookie card. Um, I don't think I'm going to eat this gum. Looks pretty disgusting. And it's hang on for dear life. I'm not even sure this Indian is. I don't think I'm, oh, there you go. You don't take your time, that's what happens. Good thing it wasn't uh, the cards I'm looking for. So, really crap pack there. Of 88 tops OP, OPG. Let's put this gum out. It was starting to get pretty nasty. So enough of that. Nothing good in that pack. Um, next one, let's do. And we'll do 90 tops next. Frank Thomas rookie cards and could be in here or Sosa. Or maybe the mystical no name on front card. Which I hope to own one day. Tony Gwynn. Vince Coleman record breaker card. And no Thomas. Patrick says, I'm going to find my He Man party pack. Has cups and napkins for a B day party. That's pretty awesome. Dom G says, do you get rid of your loose ghost with priors to prior to finding the Carter ones or only after? Um, I never really sold any of my personal collection of loose ghostbusters. If I find them, if I buy lots of stuff, then I'll end up selling them off individually. Loose ghostbusters don't really sell for too much. You gotta have the accessories or else uh, people don't really want to pay anything for them. A few bucks a piece. Chris Reaver says I got a box of Cello 90 Tops going tomorrow. That's pretty awesome, man. I hope you pulled the uh the no name on front. That'd be sick. So we have a Hall of Famer Jack Morris on the back there. Blue Jays card. I think it's a League Leaders card. On, yeah, it's on the insert. Ah, uh, we do. We do have an insert in there. I see the black border. I think it's an All Star. Uh, one of the All Star cards. Made to Barry Bonds. Just picked that card up not too long ago for a dime at an antique mall. Pretty awesome find. Steve Avery and uh, might be a Tom Glavin highlights card. Actually, it's a prospects card. Uh, Rod Brewer. That's a real letdown. Not really sure what ever happened to Rod Brewer. I haven't really heard that name in many, many years. And there's Jack Morris, League Leaders card. Nothing too great out of there. It was always pretty easy to pull inserts out of Fleer packs. 
back in the day, but they never really had much value. The Scorpion Farm says, thanks very much for the package from Pam and Chip in Connecticut. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad you, it got to you safely. Hopefully you liked everything in there. I really appreciate uh, the package you sent me. Got, um, for any of you uh, weren't around for that video, Pam and Chip sent me a big box full of wax, like wax boxes, 91 Top Straight, 92 Steam Club, and a bunch of other stuff as well. It's pretty awesome. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Vinny Castilla, right off the bat. Used to like him a lot. I always liked how they had these uh, updates on here. Signed by Mariner, Series 2. I always had those. Pretty cool. Used to enjoy that. Fix this here for you guys. Um, and there's a Tom Glavin career highlights card. Those are pretty common too. Pretty cut, pretty bad. Uh, something stuck to it. Maybe there's two of them together. No, it's nothing great there. And the rest of the pack is nothing great either. So, 93 Fleer is um, not that great of a set. I guess we'll do, we'll do triple play. Maybe we'll pull Bill Clinton rookie card. Or pull insert. They used to have bomb squad rookie cards or insert cards in these uh, these packs. Always liked those back in the day. They're pretty cool. Damon Easley and another Dave Justice Pirates versus the Braves. Used to hate the Braves back in the day. Glenn Davis. I think these might actually be uh, part of the next break, maybe. Nice Kurt Schilling. I have a box of them sitting here too. Uh, I guess we'll do 91 per deck next. Hopefully we'll get a Musina or a Bagwell rookie. Young Bucks' Clemente is my favorite player. And that's pretty awesome. Right off the bat we have Barry Bonds. This is pretty nice. Probably the best card that's not a rookie in this set. And another Hall of Famer, Barry Larkin right here. Pretty awesome. Not much value to it, but still cool nonetheless. And this will be a big pull back in 1991. Phil Plantier. Be going nuts over that if we were 91 right now. Dave Hansen, Prospects card, and a Dodgers uh, holographic sticker there. And the usual Nolan Ryan cards. These were virtually in almost every pack. 357 MAGA says, Hey, John, big fan of your channel. What year is the George Bush Yell Tops card? That is 1990. And that card is uh, very, very hard to find. I think you can probably get it on eBay for, I don't know, 150 bucks, something like that. And um, B. Trimeteer, he says, Need a thrift, thrift drug shopping cart to finish out my set of 84 Pittsburgh shopping carts. <laughs> Nani Bowman's next. Let's see what the gum looks like. And I might as well try it. I'm looking for Frank Thomas in here. I always like that Thomas. My favorite card uh, in this set is probably Ken Griffey Jr. It's his second year card. It has like some different meaning to me. I spent like an entire week looking through my entire collection of cards on a little kid. Which is like boxes upon boxes looking for this Ken Griffey card. And I found it in the very last stack of cards that I looked through. Might even be the very last uh, card, Chuck Knobloch rookie card. I had some value to it back in the day. There's a Burt Blalov, and he's a Hall of Famer. We just passed up. And nothing else too great in there. But the Knobloch would have been a big, big hit, you know, back in 1990 right now. And that gum is actually not too bad. Um, let's do Stadium Club next. Thank you once again for joining us tonight the evening of Wrestlemania 35 I'm sure it's what a lot of people are doing right now hey Paul welcome to the stream so looking for Jeff Bagwell in here I think uh, Nolan Ryan tuxedo cards in here too somebody actually just uh, sent me that card for fan mail it's pretty awesome never had it always wanted it and uh, finally have it now for the PC Tom Glavin <laughs> another Phil plant here wow Another Phil Plantier, I guess this is what this will be considered as regard to. That would be a big pull in 91. Hey, Brian. How are you? And nothing else too great in there. I'm kind of saving these newer packs for last, but I'm going to get them out of the way now because I'm 
Well, actually, you know, we'll do 92 score. I think Series 1 doesn't really have anything good in it at all. Pretty sure many Ramirez rookies in Series 2. Forgive me when I spit this gum out real quick. It's not bad, though, for being uh, almost 30 years old. So we have, uh, it's probably a Dream Team card. Thinking about opening a box of these pretty soon. Um, there's a nice Ryan Sandberg. Tedster is a big Ryan Sandberg fan. I'm sure he probably has that one, though. It's a pretty common card. So nothing too great in the 92 score pack. Not doing too great overall with these packs. Larry Walker, rookie. Um, best card we pulled so far of them. I don't really expect too much. I think I paid eight or nine bucks for this box. I guess we'll do 2010 tops next. Paul says, not sure if I got a good deal or not. I got a Mark McGuire rookie and PSA 8 for 15 bucks. Was it Mark McGuire 85 tops rookie? Thank you, Patrick. Hopefully we do. So 2010 tops here. Brett Gardner, was it Todd Helton? Francisco Liriano, Mike McCoy, rookie. Uh, is this insert card? This nice Wood McCovey. Rest in peace. Wood McCovey died late last year. I guess this is a, uh, is a uh, insert card. It's pretty cool. I don't have too many new cards. Zach Greinke, Tops Attack card, Troy Tolwitzki, and Scott Rowland. Funny story about Scott Rowland and my brother. He actually sold me Scott Rowland's 95 Bowman rookie card for 75 cents way back then. And I it was probably 95. And then uh, I want to say a month later, it skyrocketed to 75 bucks. So he was pretty pissed off at me, I think, for that. But it was an awesome deal. You know, at the time, I was really pumped about that. And then I gave it back to him over Christmas a couple of years ago. My old cut here. Gave him a card and put the Scott Rowland in there and gave it back to him. But that was nuts, though. Literally 75 cents, and a month later, it was, it was at 75 bucks. Pretty crazy. Uh, I guess we'll do opening day since we're doing some newer packs. Michael Bourne. Uh, another Troy Tulitsky. Don't really ever expect anything good out of these packs, for the most part. So we got two packs left here. Uh, I guess we'll do Upper Deck. Upper Deck Series 193 is not very great. These cards are infamous for sticking together, too. And they're stuck together, so... Big brick. Uh, but we do have an insert card in there. Then a now card. That's pretty awesome. And Armando says, I got an 86 Donald's highlight set for a buck, and it has Conseco and Bo Jackson. Um, the highlights, uh, those are not considered rookies. As far as I know, the, the Don Russ rookie cards would be considered rookies, depending on who it is. Like Bo Jackson, 86 Don Russ rookies will be considered rookie card. Uh, Conseco should be two of the highlights. The yellow border ones, those would not be considered rookies. These are all stuck together, so these are a uh, good old fun time, especially if you're doing a whole wax box opening of these. Real annoying. Would not want to do that. I always like 94 upper deck, though. I always thought about doing a break on those. I always used to like that when I was younger. It's a A-Rod rookie. I always liked that design in the beginning of the set, the rookies. Michael Jordan was in there. It was a hot card back then. Still has some good value to it. And a Frank Thomas checklist there. So I'm stoked to see who this insert card's going to be. Um, looks like a Dave Winfield, so not too bad. I always like these ones, too. Not bad at all. That's pretty cool. Probably worth like two bucks, but still pretty awesome regardless. And this is a nice one, too. Tim Salmon checklist card. I think this is actually used to have some uh, value to it back in the day, even though it's a checklist. These cards always suck so bad because of the freaking black border on the top and bottom. Like You can see right there. I just opened this pack and it's already like there's already some damage to the top and bottom of that. So good luck in the PSA 10 um, on those. Yeah, Wakefield's pretty awesome. I'm pretty stoked about that. I'll probably put that in my PC. I have a couple of those other ones. Pretty nice. So put that one off to the side. Definitely the probably the my favorite card and the best card pulled so far is that Winfield. 
What I love about 90s packs, insert cards are all the craze back then. It's all I searched for. There was no relics or really autographs or anything else. Autographs were just unheard of to pull out of a pack. Pull an insert card, just start jumping up down screaming if you pull one out of a pack in a card shop somewhere. Uh, I don't, doesn't look like we have an insert in here. We have a rookie. Maybe it's Tim Salmon. Hey, man, War, how you doing? These ones aren't stuck together too bad. Alan Watson, Benji Gill. Some of you guys might remember that video I did recently with uh, those search packs I bought at that card shop and ended up pulling the Jim Evans rookie out of there. And Derek Jeter, too, out of the 93 Predict. It's pretty crazy. There's a ton of rookies in here. Too bad there's no Edmonds yet. What a crazy pack. I've never seen anything like that. It's like literally all rookies. <laughs> Like 90% of that pack is rookies. They're close to it. But no Edmonds out of that one. So that is it for World's Greatest Card Chase. We did not pull any of the rookies out of any of those packs. Um, but been doing the last year in 41 minutes. Do you guys want to do anything else? Like I said, I have that 92 score box. There's a bunch of autographs could be in there. Wouldn't mind doing that. Still advertising the 87 rack case. Uh, there's still spots, I think. I have doing a disturb on my phone, so check that out if you have it, if you're interested in entering that, and maybe we'll possibly pull a Gemman, 10, Bonds, Bo Jackson, Larkin. Um, yeah, 92 score. I've been wanting to do it for a while. That's why I bought it, was to rip it open. So it's kind of just been sitting around. But I paid five bucks for this box. Actually, no, I mean, it was 10. I can't remember. But there's a lot of autos you can pull in here. Musial Mantle and Yaz. There's one card that has all them on it together that they all autographed. They also have separate cards in there. There's Chuck Knobloch uh, autograph card, which still has a decent amount of value. And one of the packs that I took out here before was already ripped open. So uh, I, I checked the rest out. These are all good. So there's only 35 packs in here. This is Series 2, as far as I know. Mayor Mears is in here. And it looks like a $10 Super Chat from Bill Sites. Hey, John, how was your weekend? Thank you so much, Bill. I really appreciate that. Um, very, very generous of you. Thank you so much. Um, weekend was pretty good. Found a decent amount of cards and whatnot. Just ripped a bunch of packs open. Um, some decent rookies for pretty cheap. Looks like we have... Is it Terry Stein back on the front? I'm not sure. These packs aren't as hard to open as the 89 score were. But basically, we're looking for autographs in this box. You never know if we're going to come across one or not. Any event, it's like, that's a nice one. But also wouldn't mind finding another Man or Mirrors. And then these Dream Team cards were always pretty cool. I used to like these a lot back in the day. Nice Kyle Ripken standing in front of a train. Not sure what the significance of that is. But they're not insert cards. They're base cards. But uh, I always thought those were cool. They were definitely different in that time era. Still kind of are because some of them are really weird. Especially 91 score Dream Team cards. You got like Jose and Seiko. The shirt off, like, on a, standing on the beach or whatever, swinging a bat. Always a weird one. We actually pulled that one out of a 91 score box when we did the mixer break a few weeks ago. We were talking about it while we were ripping the pack open, too. But I always have a soft spot for 92 score. I don't know why. Probably because I used to love them when I was a kid because they were so cheap, and that's what I would always go to to buy a lot of the time. So I have tons of 92 score commons my parents' house. Chuck Knobloch, but not the autograph. So, I have a weird attachment to this set, even though there's really no value. It's a nice Wade Boggs Dream Team card there. And Terry Pendleton, most valuable player. A David Cohn is a draft pick card. Is it Mayor Ramirez? No, it is not. Aaron Seeley. Wow, that's pretty cool. This is probably one of my favorite cards when I was, when I was a younger kid. Uh, Aaron Seeley was uh, my favorite player for a couple of years there. That was actually a pretty hot card at the time, too. I want to say it, was, it booked at like four bucks maybe back, back in the day. Always liked Darren Seeley. Actually, totally forgot that car was in the set, so I hope we can pull Manny Ramirez. Draft pick card, too. Always like the style of those. But as you can see, 92 score, pretty bland, boring for the most part. I always like the rookie prospect down there. I thought that was cool, kind of cool. Roger Clemens, Cy Young Award. That's a neat one. And a man of the year, Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken was uh, Eric's favorite player for quite a while there, way before. Um, the streak and everything else. Tyler Green draft pick. And a lot of comments. You guys may have seen my one of my recent Fimo Fridays wherever I received all these Tim Wakefields. 
<laughs> a ton of Tim Wakefields. This is 92 score traded. Looked for that card for the longest time. And Chris Sabo's glasses came through and sent me 23 of them. And uh, I actually sent one to a subscriber that asked for one not too long ago. Very hard card to track down. Looks like right on the back here we have Frank Thomas. Yeah, these ones, the old score packs, you got to be careful for because if you're excited and you're just trying to tether cards out of there, you're going to wrinkle and crease the corners. They get they get caught in this uh, real easily. Plastic bag wrapper. Hall of Famer Jack Morris there. And another Dream Team card is a nice Will Clark. I don't think I ever saw that one before. Pretty cool. Bill Seitz says, I loved your lead in your in the last film on Friday. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate that. And Kevin, before that, said, what's the orange price tag say? It says twenty one sixty on there. Must be Edgar Martinez, newly inducted to the Hall of Fame. And there's the Frank Thomas. Pretty nice. Must have been from the price room. I mean, it can't be the price from 92. And the 92, these are probably like 60 bucks for a box of these. Something like that. We looked in the Wish Book. The Wish Book video I did from 92, uh... I don't know, a month ago or whatever it was. It was crazy how much boxes were going for. I think $92 was like 60 bucks. The sets were 60 bucks. Now you can buy them for five, sealed for the most part. Jim Abbott's a nice one. Always like Jim Abbott. John Wayner. And there's a nice Frank Thomas Big Bat Dream Team card. He's like that one when I was younger. Jack Morris. And is this a Manor Ramirez? No, it is not. Scott Ruffcorn. Draft pick card. Another Edgar Martinez. And another Frank Thomas. That's weird. Back to back there. Hope we don't see that uh, again. Don't want a repeat of Eric's 81 Don Russ. Unless it would be the autographs. That'd be pretty awesome. Tony going off the bat. It's pretty nice. Kurt Schilling. Another Cal Ripken. Didn't pull that one yet. That's pretty nice. Pocket, 91 highlight, and not Mayor Ramirez. Benji Gill, draft pick card. And nothing else too great in that pack. I usually can buy a box of these for, I don't know, really no more than 10 bucks. I think I bought one last year at the National for like 8 bucks, just to rip it open for fun. But you really shouldn't pay more than 10 bucks. There's Hall of Famer Lee Smith there. For uh for a box of these, ten bucks would be the limit I would pay. Tony Gwynn, it's a nice big head card there, and a repeat pack again. The last few cards, not like in that pattern, especially repeat commons. Hoping to pull an autograph out of here for any of you guys that are new to the chat. I'll take any. I'll take the knob block too. That'd be pretty cool. Very difficult to pull autographs out of older packs. Can't say that I've ever done it. Nice Kenny Lofton. And a Tell Me Back to Back. Tell Me Second Year card. Actually, both of their second year cards. Pretty cool. Todd Van Poppel. That was a hot one back in the day. Not so much anymore. Probably worth about a nickel now. Another Dream Team card. It looks like uh, Mitch Williams there. Uh, looks like, what is the next one? Is that Manny Ramirez? Oh, it is. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love that card. I uh, I think I only have one of this already, but always was a big Manny Ramirez fan. Um, pretty awesome card right there. Love that. Nice pull. If we could just see more of that card instead of the uh, duplicate junk uh junk wax commons like that one a lot if i see that in every pack i'm not gonna complain i think the book's about four bucks but i mean i'm sure you could probably find it at 50 cent bins dollar bins at any card show you go to tina martinez anybody else go out to any flea markets this weekend at all will clark big head card Kevin says, I like the Manny Ramirez A's card from the other day. Yeah, Female Friday, somebody sent me a newer Tops card of him in his A's uniform. I don't have any of those. Uh, didn't have any of those cards at all. Pretty awesome. 
Incredible CJ Collectible says, I went to a card show today. Find anything good? Isaac went to a garage sale. The card show I went to yesterday was, was all right. I wish I would have had more time to... I mean, I probably could have sat there for five hours. He had this guy a nickel box, the six for a dollar box, 50 cent box. Um, I probably could have spent five hours there. Wouldn't have got anything too great, though. Just, you know, maybe some insert cards. Cliff Floyd, that's a nice one. I don't I actually don't have this one. I am pretty excited about that one. Cliff Floyd, 92 score draft pick card, rookie. Pretty awesome. Never even seen that card, so that's going to go on my PC. Was not expecting that. Nothing really too crazy. Probably valued at about a buck, but still, I consider it a good find. Just for what I collect. Young Buck went to a card show in Dayton, Ohio. I guess about five hours away from here. I've seen some card shows posted out there. Thought about going, but uh, too far away for, you know, 40 tables or whatever. Two solid blocks of 89 Don Russ for 10 bucks a piece. Incredible CJ Collectibles. Well. That's a, definitely a good deal. Definitely a good deal. No doubt about it. Move on. Another Kurt Schilling. Another Benji Gill draft pick. And a nice Ricky Henderson there. And a Canseco. So, nice little A's pack there. Hoping we can find one of these autographs. Or maybe some more Manny Ramirez rookies. Deion Sanders off the bat there. Pretty nice. Another Henderson, and we have another repeat there. Very fishy. I feel like most of the older boxes that I open nowadays, I've noticed that so much more than I used to. The cards at the end of the pack, repeating and whatnot. See it so much more, it's weird. Obviously, these aren't search, but just the way they were cut. Uh, what is this? This is a Lou Gehrig card. I remember this one back in the day. It's part of the base set, but I always liked it. I always thought it was pretty cool. Lou Gehrig commemorative card. Brett Butler, big head card in the Saberhagen no-hit club. Not inserts, just base set cards with really no value, but still interesting and unique. Probably about one-third of the way down to this box. Ben McDonough, some nice Barry Bonds. I like that card a lot. I don't think I, I had that one. Mike Mussina, second year card. New to the Hall of Fame. And a nice Tony Wynn Dream Team card. Hall of Famer Lee Smith, big head card. At Young Bucks, says I bought a 59 Ted Williams with three bucks. Well, it sounds like a decent deal regardless. Back had a lot of damage, like wax damage, or sometimes I still see. Uh, cards that are creased pretty bad and I'll still buy them anyways a mess of things says try to hit the state civil got called to work well that really sucks luckily I didn't get called into work myself this weekend really happy that the nice weather is back around where we're at at least because people were actually set up outside our flea markets now so there's a lot more uh, to choose from Brian Barber giraffe pick card and nothing too great in that pack Still chasing the autograph cards, though, regardless. There's a, um, and you guys that are local, there's a card convention. The, the old Robert Moore's card show is actually going to be taking place next month in the Monroeville Convention Center. Pretty awesome. Went to it last year, picked up a lot of stuff. I think I got a box of, a wax box of 86 tops for like 15 bucks, which is a really good deal. You do yourself like 30 to 40 on eBay. So there's a lot of people set up there. There was also some uh, retired players there too. I forget, I uh, can't remember who the players were. Kind of slipped my mind, but uh, it's a long line of people waiting to meet him. Wade Boggs. Or John Wayner. And there's a nice Curry Pocket Dream Team card. And that's followed by a Ty Cobb, a commemorative card there. Barry Larkin, big head card. And nothing too great. I'm going to dump all these out so I stop reaching in. 
Let's see how many we have left, too. I appreciate you guys all joining me tonight, though. I haven't done a live stream in a while, so... Sunday night, what better night to do it than to rip packs than on a Sunday. Whenever you're sitting around not feeling like going to work the next day. Another repeat pack there, Barry Bonds. It's kind of weird. And Lucina. And Nasili again. Pretty cool. Reggie Sanders, second year card. And nothing else too great in there. Like I said, I wish we could just get repeat, repeat packs with the Manor and Mirrors. They'd be pretty sick. Yeah, I figured WrestleMania would tap into the people that are in the chat, but still a decent amount of you in here. I appreciate that. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to try to do, uh, maybe we'll do the 87 Tops rack case tomorrow if it sells out. Like I said, my phone's on doing disturb, so um, I'm not sure if it did or not. But there was four spots left uh, last time I looked, so looking forward to doing those. I want to say, Robin Yount, I want to say you get 576 cards. So you got many chances of pulling the Barry Bonds, and if you want, you could throw it on eBay and maybe make, I don't know, 100 bucks off it, maybe $2,000 off of it. The freaking uh, error card hype that's going on around that one. Looks like we have an insert card here. The franchise. What is that? Could it be an autograph? Oh, I'm excited. I'm not, I don't think I've ever pulled an insert card out of 92 score. Ah, um, uh, it's a stamp usual, but it's not an auto. One of four. This is pretty intriguing. I, I don't think I've ever seen this. I think if there was an auto, it would be on a card exactly like this. Not really sure the value that is. I'm going to put it off to the side, though. But that's pretty awesome, though. Pretty awesome. I've opened a lot of these packs and uh, have never seen that. There's a Rob Dibble. Looking like a member of the Outsiders. Yeah, pretty stoked on that. It's damn usual. Very uh, intriguing card. Have any of you guys ever seen one of these before? Ace fan Jim says, I have one of those usuals. Pretty cool, though. Like I said, never pulled an insert card on 92 score. So, that makes it all worth it for me. Definitely put that in my PC. Turned out to be a decent box. Jeff Bagwell's second year card. Pretty cool. Another Tina Martinez. Yeah, Terminator Dibble, young buck, honestly. The T2000, Kirk Gibson. Cal Ripken Jr., T2000, Rob Dibble. Stan the Man was awesome, no doubt about it. Ace Fan Jim says there are four spots up in the break, so if you guys are interested in the 87 Tops break, check it out. Randy Johnson, Curry Puckett, off to a good start with this pack. We will do that break as soon as it sells out. Will Clark, and it looks like another um, Lou Gehrig there. Brett Butler, big head card, and a bunch of repeats, it looks like. Ryan Vivian, yeah, it's definitely a decent pull on that one. I'm pretty excited about that. Need to throw that in a top loader ASAP before I forget about it. I think it's like stepped on or something. Another Frank Thomas big bat card there. Ramon Martinez, it's Pedro J. Martinez's brother. Dennis Martinez, no hit club. And another Robin Yount, and the same cards as before. So, we're getting down to... So we got like 10 packs left. Maybe we'll pull on our franchise card. I wonder what the odds of those are. Um, uh, let's see here. We have odds on the back of this pack. Franchise set consists of one card each of Stam Usual. Mickey Man on card. Scripsky plus a combo card with all three players on it. A total of 6,496 autographed um, of each... I'm so having such a hard time reading this small type. So they, they basically the the stamp usual um, they printed 149,000, almost 150,000 of each of these, of these four cards. So probably not too much value to it. Um, but still cool regardless. I don't see any kind of odds on here for pulling out of a pack, but there's definitely a lot of them out there. But still cool regardless. I'm always hyped on pulling insert cards.
Doesn't matter to me what they are. Tony Gwynn again. And it looks like another repeat pack here. Hojo. Kyle Ripken. Curry Pocket. Kevin says the franchise mutual. Craig Biggio, Hall of Famer. The franchise mutual goes for 80 cents. <laughs> That's disheartening. I thought it'd be at least like a $5 card or something. Yeah, it'd be cool if there was only four made, but uh, there's a lot made. We are talking about the junk wax area here, and the reason why all these cards you're looking at aren't worth anything because they printed so many of them, too many of them. But I like someone else's idea. I forget who it was that said it originally a few weeks ago, but they said, let's take all our cards and destroy them, and we'll raise the value of you know, them in the end. Another Cliff Floyd. That's pretty awesome. I like that card. First time I've ever seen it tonight. Another Cal Ripken, too. Yeah, take all these cards and just take them and throw them in a river somewhere. Enough people do that. You know, your common cards are worth a nickel, maybe with a dollar. You know, that go up in value. Supply and demand. But there's probably somebody out there that, there, though, that, uh, I was talking to some guy yesterday at the card show that told me, uh, I'm not sure where you heard of that, but he said that they printed enough Cal or Ken Griffey Jr. 89 upper deck rookie cards to go around the entire world. Which doesn't really make sense to me because if they print that many of them, how does that card have any, have any value at all whatsoever? Especially more so than the other rookie cards. So if you if you lay them down all you know next to each other, you can go the entire way around the world at least one time with just Ken Griffey Jr. upper deck rookie cards. Not sure how true it is. I'm not sure who told him that, Ozzy Smith. But I was like, that's pretty interesting that it hold, still holds so much value for how many are in uh, circulation. Doesn't really make sense. So, but if it is true, you know, and there are that many out there, I wonder how many there is of like the A9 Fleer or the A9 Top Traded. Or, you know, kind of makes you think. The A9 Don Ross, even, is probably, if, if that's true, maybe enough to go around the world three times. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't sound possible at all, Bill Mason. It really doesn't. It's like are you literally just pulling this uh Jeff Bagwell? Pulling this out of your rear end or what, man? Because that just sounds like a bunch of crap that you just made up to make conversation with me at your card show while I'm buying your cards. Not really good selling uh point though. If you are selling the Griffey Jr. upper deck and you're telling people that, then you know, your cards probably gonna sit there with dust on it for a long time until you shut up. But yeah, it definitely didn't sound possible to me either. It's just like that's pretty ridiculous, man. Maybe like some cards, like ninety one Fleer and stuff like that, they printed way too many of. Uh maybe you could do that with some of those. That would be believable. Daryl Kyle left us too early. And nothing really good in that pack at all. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty funny story. It's the same guy that had like the six for a dollar boxes, fifty cent boxes. And then he tried to sell me uh what was it? Uh, it's like a 3,000 count box for like $300. I told him absolutely not. It's a pretty big ripoff. Kerry Sheffield. David Cohn. Uh, Pudge Rodriguez. I don't think I've ever seen that car before. It's pretty sick. Um, it's nice. His rookie's actually 91 uh, score traded. Pocket Dream Team card, Dennis Martinez, and this is another Cliff Floyd. Really weird. So I went from having zero of that Cliff Floyd to having three of it tonight. Kind of cool, I like that. Bill Sight says, no way that's true. <laughs> I don't think so either. You know, I, was, I just laughed at myself as soon as, uh, as soon as he said it. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm real sure, man. Did you read that on the internet somewhere? Or? No way that that's true. Absolutely not. Tim Raines. And there's that Boggs Dream Team card again. And nothing else that great in there. So we're down to our last four packs looking for one of these autographs. The usual, the mantle, or the Yaz, or even the Chuck Knobloch, I will take an autograph. I'm sure you can probably buy those on eBay for not that much money now if you look. I want to say I looked up the mantle in here not too long ago. It was only like a couple hundred bucks. Nothing too crazy for how rare they are. Another Ripken Dream Team. 
a knob lock you can probably get for like 10 bucks on there. Three packs left to go, and then uh, that is it for us for the night. Just want to thank you guys all again for stopping by and hanging out, and chatting with me. Always appreciate it. Nice George Brett. Thank you, Jack, and thank you for watching. Maybe we'll have a Manger Mirrors here. Alan Watson, haven't seen that one yet. And a Brent Gates. Those are two new ones. That waited to service till the end of the box. And a bunch of chunk commons. Two packs left. Truth be told, you got here kind of late, but thank you for joining us. Ace Fan Jim did the math on the Griffey card. Comes out to 450 million. 780,000 cards made. So that would be, for them to stretch around the entire world, they would have had to make almost 451 million of that Griffey card, which I really doubt that it'd be, you know, hold the value it does if they made that many of that card. I'd still like to know the exact amount made, though. Originally, it'd be pretty, be pretty awesome. Hey, John, thanks for joining us. Nice Jeff Bagwell Rookie of the Year card. It's a nice one. A second year card for Bagwell. And another Biggio, Hall of Famer there, but really no value to his cards, unless you have his rookies. And we got one pack left, guys, and that's going to be it for us tonight. And I will probably watch some YouTube videos and relax after uh, a long weekend. Kevin says everyone in the Griffey gets a Griffey card. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. And recommendation, watch WrestleMania on Periscope. I'm sure everyone else is watching WrestleMania right now. That's why there's hardly anybody in there. But I appreciate the guys that uh, all you guys had decided to skip that to watch us rip some junk wax era packs here. Um, not a main or mirrors. Scott Ruffcorn again. John Ramos. And some crappy comments. So thanks for bearing with me for 92 score. Nothing that great in there other than usual, which is pretty awesome. But we did pull three Cliff Floyds, a rookie card I did not have. Now I have three of it and another Manor Ramirez. So pretty cool there. And the pretty neat uh, Stan Musial um, insert card there. There's only four in the set. So I'm going to check that out. Pretty neat. Sleeve it up. And one last time, still advertising the 87 Tops rack case. And it is a sealed case, as you can see there. So, not opening it until we actually do the break, so there's no switching around. But these are on eBay now, live. I will throw a link down below to go and check this out. There's four spots left. They're $19.99 plus shipping, and there's Bonds, Bo Jackson, and everything else in here. So, once that sells, we will um, do the break. So, if it sells out tonight, we'll do the break tomorrow or the next day. Um, but until next time, guys, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it, and uh, enjoy what's left of your weekend. 